A pair of dice is rolled and the sum is determined. Let the random variable x denote the sum. In this video, we will identify the sample space and the space of the random variable x and we will construct the probability mass function and its corresponding probability histogram. Let's first identify the sample space of the random variable x. We will use the tree diagram to illustrate the possible outcomes of this random variable. So for the first dice, there are six possible outcomes. And those are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. These are the possible outcomes you will get if you toss a fair dice. The next one is for each outcome, we will list all the possible outcomes when we throw another die. And those are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This will be mapped here. This will be connected. And same goes to the other numbers that we have here. So I'll just copy paste this one. So we have it here for 2 and we have for 3. And let's reduce this one to 80. And just to fit the number. And for 4, for 5, and for 6. From here, we will now identify the sample space of the random variable denoted by S. So the first outcome is we get 1 and 1 for the first and the second die respectively. So we have 1, 1. Second outcome is 1, 2. Third outcome is 1, 3. So notice I am denoting this one with an ordered pair. This is a possibility. Next, we have 1, 4, 1, 5, and 1, 6. So for the next one, we have 2, 1. And this outcome is different from the, the other outcome, which is 1, 2. So we have 2 and 2. We have 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, and 2, 6. Then we also have 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5, and 3, 6. We have 4, 1. 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, and 4, 6. We also have 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5. And 5, 6. And we have 6, 1. 6, 2. 6, 3. 6, 4. 6, 5. And finally, we have 6, 6. So this is the sample space of the random variable x. Next. Let's identify the space of the random variable x denoted by r sub x because x is our random variable. Since we want to identify the sum, therefore, we will add 
the two numbers present in each outcome that we listed here in our sample space. So if we add this one, we have two. Here we have three. This one is four. Five. This is six. And this is seven. This one is three. And you don't need to repeat this one because it's already listed here. So this is four. This is five. This is six. This is seven. And this is eight. This is four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is nine. So we add that one. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this one is ten. This is 6, this is 7, this is 8, 9, 10, and 11. And we have, this is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and we have 12. So we now have the space of the random variable x. Next, let's try to construct the probability mass function of the random variable x. So, this is the probability mass function and we have the following values. So, if P of X, which is equal to 2, so the sum is equal to 2, we will try to identify how many times does this sum appear in the sample space that we have here the sum of two only appeared once and this is this particular outcome we get one in the first die and another one in the other die so it only happened once so in the numerator we will write one then divided by how many outcomes do we have in our sample space if we count this one, actually there are 36 because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 times 6 is 36. So we continue the process until we identify the associated probabilities of all the values in our set here, the space of the random variable x. So x is equal to 3. How many times does it appear in our sample space? This is 1 and this is 2. There's no other outcome that we can see such that the sum is 3. Therefore, we have 2 in the numerator and still 36 in the denominator because we have 36 outcomes in our sample space. While it is suggested to write it this way for now, it will be more appropriate if you will simplify your answer. But for now, let's leave it as it is. So 4p of x, which is equal to 4, so let's identify the outcome such that the sum is equal to 4. This one, we have 1, we have 2, and we have 3. So it appeared thrice in the sample space, giving us our numerator, which is 3 and 36 as our denominator. Next, we have p of x equal to 5. And that happens when we have these outcomes. We have 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, and 4, 1. So it happened 4 times. And in our denominator, we still have 36. Next, for p of x is equal to 6, Let's identify those outcomes. This one, this one, and this one, this one, and this one. And it appeared one, two, three, four, five times. So our numerator is 5, whereas our denominator is 36. Next, p of x is equal to 7. And let's identify in our sample space the outcomes such that their sum is 7. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
there are six outcomes. Therefore, that's our numerator, and our denominator is still 36. Next, p of x is equal to 8. Let's identify those outcomes. This one, this one, 3, 4, and 5. So it appeared 5 times. Therefore, 5 will be written in the numerator. And in our denominator, we will write 36. Next, we have p of x is equal to 9. And this one happened in these outcomes. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 times. 4 over 36. Next, we have p of x is equal to 10. And that happened if we have these outcomes. 1, 2, and 3. So 3 times. 3 in the numerator, 36 in the denominator. Next is p of x is equal to 11. And this happened in these outcomes, 1, 2. So 2 in the numerator, 36 in the denominator. And finally, we have p of x is equal to 12. So it only happened once. Therefore, our numerator will be 1 and our denominator will be 36. So this will be the probability mass function of our random variable x. Here, in the left portion of our screen, you will see the probability histogram of the random variable x. So when we construct the probability histogram of our random variable, make sure that the value of x is at the middle of the bar, as seen here. Yeah. So 2 is in the middle of this bar, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this is 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And the height corresponds to the associated probability of that outcome. So for 2, the associated probability is 1 over 36 based on our probability mass function. And therefore, the height of that bar there is... Uh, at 1 over 36. So for 3, we have 2 over 36 and so on. Take note also that when we construct the probability histogram of our random variable, make sure that the values or the outcomes or the values of our random variable should be written on the x-axis, whereas um, the probabilities associated for each value should be written in the y-axis. So this is now the probability histogram of the random variable x. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.